Hey everyone, Mark Rusin here back for another video. And today we are going to discuss three ETFs that I plan to hold and I buy on a monthly basis. I'm going to be holding these ETFs and adding to them each and every month, sometimes on a weekly occurrence. But these are three of my top ETFs in my portfolio today. If you're new to investing, and I talk with a lot of new investors, and it's one of the biggest pieces of advice I give them is to always build a strong foundation. And one way to do that is using ETFs, specifically the three ETFs that we're going to discuss today. So if you're looking to build a strong foundation and check out the top three ETFs in my portfolio, or I should say three top ETFs in my portfolio that I plan to never sell. If this sounds interesting to you, then let's jump in and get started. Hey everyone, as always, everything discussed in this video is for educational and informational purposes only. As I am not a financial advisor, please always do your due diligence before investing in any stock or ETF mentioned here. Also, if you are interested in opening a new account or even a retirement account, head down to the description below and check out my M1 Finance link, where right now they are giving away 50 free dollars for all new accounts that you open and fund here in the next few days. Plus, check out my BlockFi link down below to get yourself some free Bitcoin. Who doesn't love some free money? All right, without further ado, let's jump in to the first ETF that I plan to buy on a monthly basis. Not plan to, I actually buy on a monthly basis. And it is a foundational piece and the foundation of my portfolio. And that is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF stock ticker VOO. An investment in VOO is an investment in the S&P 500 index. Now you can't directly invest in an index, but you can a back doorway through ETFs. And there are certain ETFs out there, every brokerage has their own, that tracks exactly what that index is doing. And in the case of Vanguard, it's a low cost ETF and it tracks exactly what the S&P 500 has in it. And again, the S&P 500 is a market cap weighted index. Over the past year, the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF has returned roughly 35%. It has an expense ratio of 0.03%. The VOO ETF is a great way to track this S&P 500. And one reason is due to the low expense ratio. And this is something I really want you to pay attention to when looking at ETFs. You can get into active ETFs that are trading in and out of stocks every day or every week or every month, but they're gonna charge high expense ratios to cover, and this is how they make their income. But with the case of VOO, it's really just tracking an index. Whatever the index changes are, which the S&P 500 doesn't add and subtract new members on a monthly, they really do it four times per year. So there's really not a lot of changes that need to go on when tracking the S&P 500. The expense ratio for VOO is only 0.03%, so essentially zero. I mean, if you have $10,000 invested in an ETF like VOO with a 0.03% expense ratio, your annual fees are $3. And again, the S&P 500 is market cap weighted. So when you're looking at the top 10 holdings for the S&P 500, you're gonna see the mega tech stocks like Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Nvidia, Berkshire, and JP Morgan Chase. And these 10 stocks make up nearly 30% of the entire S&P 500. With this ETF, you actually also get a dividend. The VOO ETF pays a dividend of 1.23%. The second ETF that is a foundational position in my portfolio and an ETF that I add to on a monthly basis, and again, sometimes a weekly basis with this one as well, is the Vanguard Total Market Index, stock ticker VTI. This total market index is exactly how it sounds. It holds every single US public company that there is today on the market. So when you look at a ETF like VTI, over the past year, the index has returned 35%. 
and like VOO, VTI is also a low cost index. There's not a ton of movement that's going to be in and out. So Vanguard charges 0.03% in terms of a annual expense ratio. An investment in VTI also earns you a dividend yield of 1.18% currently. When looking at the top 10 holdings, it's really going to be spread out a lot more. It's again, it's going to be market cap weighted as well. But instead of just 500 stocks that are in the S&P 500 ETF with VTI being a total market index ETF, you're going to have over 4,000 stocks that are in this ETF. So really, if this one goes to zero and you lose all of your money, we have a whole heck of a lot worse problems to worry about. So this is about as safe as an investment as there gets. Regardless, the top 10 holdings for VTI include a lot of similarities that we saw with the S&P 500. You have Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Nvidia, and JP Morgan Chase. Looking at the top 10 holdings, it's actually gonna be exactly the same as the S&P 500 or VOO, but there's a lot more stocks as we mentioned in here, over 4,000 stocks that are in VTI being as it's a total market index. So the weightings are gonna be a little bit less than we saw with the S&P 500, but in terms of what stocks are in the top 10, it's gonna be the same exact order and the same exact stock. So you're gonna have Apple, Microsoft, Amazon, Facebook, Google, Tesla, Nvidia, and JP Morgan to round out the top 10. The third ETF that I buy on a regular basis, and it is a, again, a foundational position of my portfolio, is the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF, stock ticker VIG. Now, VIG is has a special place in my heart due to the fact that I am a dividend growth investor myself. A lot of the individual positions I own are dividend growth stocks. So when you think of something like Home Depot or AbbVie or Visa or Starbucks, all of these have double digit dividend increases each and every year. And that's what exactly what VIG holds. They hold stocks that are not only pay a dividend, but increase their dividend on a regular basis. VIG over the past 12 months has actually underperformed the S&P 500, but it has returned to shareholders 25% over the past year. The dividend yield is 1.5%, so you're gonna get not a ton more in terms of dividend yield, but you're gonna get a lot more dividend growth. Over the past five years, VIG has increased their dividend over 8% on average each year. In terms of sector breakdown, VIG's largest sector is financials, followed by industrials, technology, and the consumer defensive sector. Now looking at the top 10 holdings for VIG, you may see some crossover as we've seen with the last two ETFs, but it's gonna be a lot more mixed up here. So we still have Microsoft and JP Morgan, but now we're gonna add Johnson & Johnson, United Health, Visa, Home Depot, Procter & Gamble, Comcast, Abbott Labs, and Pepsi Company. All of these ETFs are great foundational positions to start your portfolio or to add to on a regular basis. You can have all three or you can have one of the three. Just take a look at each of these, whether it's VOO if you want that S&P 500 exposure, VTI if you really wanna be conservative and get a total market exposure, or if you're looking for dividend growth, check out the Vanguard Dividend Appreciation ETF with VIG. In the comments section down below, let me know if you own any of these ETFs and what ETFs you add to on a regular basis. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, I would really appreciate it if you gave us a big thumbs up as that would really help the growth of this channel moving forward. And with that being said, we will see you in the next video. Take care.